if you're just starting out, part of your systems is actually your vision, mm. right? Because everything that you build in your company is going to be done according to the vision is how the world is going to be different because you are there. And once we know how you're going to make the world a different place, then we can start to systemize a business to support that. The mission is the how we're going to do it. So once we establish how we're going to do it, there are processes that underlie that. And I believe too that foundationally, they need to know their core values because every decision that's made about what systems will allow to be a part of our business is going to be based on those core values. You're listening to episode 185 of the Fitness Business Podcast. This month's premier podcast partner is Team Rockstar Fit, the mastermind team that helps fitness professionals and studios add nutrition, fitness, and online coaching to their existing business with tools from Beachbody. To find out more, visit teamrockstarfit.com. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. This week's special guest is Travis Barnes. Travis is the CEO of Journey 333 and the founder of FitBiz Mastery. He's the author of two books, Journey Fitness and 52 Amazing Journeys. During this week's show, we discuss the areas of our fitness business that we should all systemize. He talks about what club owners, studio owners, and personal trainers can learn from the way franchise fitness business models run. And we discuss the most important three factors for systemizing our fitness business. It's almost time for this week's interview, but first, I want to thank this month's premier podcast partner. Team Rockstar Fit is an award-winning mastermind team that helps fitness professionals lead happy and balanced lives, get mentoring and support, learn how to grow your business online with Beachbody. You can apply for a free consultation today at teamrockstarfit.com. Enjoy this week's interview with Travis Barnes. Travis, I am so excited to welcome you to the Fitness Business Podcast. It's a big honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Now, we, of course, met not that long ago at the Idea World Convention 2018, and I had the amazing opportunity to sit in the audience while you presented to the delegates of the Club and Studio Summit. I was just blown away by your presentation and by the systems that you spoke about. So it was a no-brainer for me. I was like, I've got to get this guy on the show to share your knowledge and your experience with the listeners of the show. But before we talk about systems, you, you obviously have had quite a remarkable journey to becoming a multi-location fitness business owner. And I was hoping that maybe you could start off by sharing a little bit of your story with all of us here today. Sure, absolutely. I, I'm honored to share my story because my hope is that there will be somebody listening that feels like they have some adversity, that they have an obstacle to overcome, and that maybe they have a mindset holding them back, like they don't have enough resources or money or enough education. And I want to let you know, and I want to let the listeners know that I had to overcome a decade of an incarceration to get to where I'm at. So that's a decade. Yeah. 10 years, right? I know we'd like to think a decade. Is he talking about, you know, 10 days, <laughs> 10 months? <laughs> it's, uh, it was 10 years. And uh, it was just poor choices. I'm sure that we've all made different poor choices in our life, but that has become the better part of who I am. I remember early on in my decade of incarceration, my hope was to get a job in this furniture factory. And so I don't know what you know about prison wages, but no, most of the time you're just sweeping up a floor for maybe 40 cents an hour, or maybe 20 cents. But if you can get into that furniture factory, you could make a dollar an hour. And if you're willing to work 15 hours a day, then you could actually make $2 on your second half of the day. So I got into the furniture factory and in order to work my way into that dollar per hour, I had to get a P grade. And there was only one available in each department. And these correctional officers were very concerned about this guy who was leaving, this guy Ryan, because he had been there for 20 years and nobody knew how to do Ryan's job. So I asked him, I said, hey, has anybody ever sat beside Ryan and written down what he does? And they're like, well, 
no, do you want to do that? And I was like, of course, right? Because at the time I was, I was trying to just make some money to take care of myself. And if I was willing to work 15 hours a day, I could send a little money home to my family. And that became the first time that I actually ever systemized anything. I systemized his position by writing down step-by-step processes for what it was that he was doing. And that became my first operations manual. Little did I know that one day I would be released and and write an operations manual for the first business that I worked for, the first fitness business. And now, uh, of course, I opened up my own business with that operations manual, which allowed me to grow from one location to five locations in less than four years. That is just remarkable, Travis. And of course, not only have you utilized systems within your business, but now you teach other fitness professionals and other business owners about how they can systemize their business. So that's what we're going to be diving into today. So do you want to start off by explaining to us what areas of our fitness business we should actually look at systemizing? Yes, yes. I think every area that you would like to work for you, meaning that when we carry things around in our head and then there's things that only we can do and that people have to come to us for the answers, if you find somebody coming to you saying, oh, you know, how do I do this? Or where do I find the answer to that? That is an indication that you need to systemize it. You need to write it down, teach it to your team and make sure that they can look it up in a book so that it's nice to have an open door policy, but it's not nice if your door works like a revolving door with people spinning <laughs> round around out it because nobody can find the info except for by talking to you. So everything in your business from the sales and marketing end of things to the operations to the finance and admin that happens on the back end, all those things should have processes and systems that can be found in a thing called the operations manual. So, Travis, you know what? Whenever I think about systems, in my head, I quite often think about franchise-based businesses because I think they're always a pretty good example of where systems work incredibly well. Is there anything in your experience that you say that we could learn from franchise business models? Absolutely. Uh, You know, one of my favorite books, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, talks about how 80% of franchises succeed while 80% of small businesses fail. It's a really interesting statistic, and we might be uh, we might be misled actually to think, oh well, of course they succeed. You know, they have this brand or they have this name. However, if you show up at the McDonald's drive-through and suddenly it takes an hour to get your meal, you're not going back, right? They succeed because they have a playbook of systems that they follow that allows them to run that drive-through in 90 seconds or less, or you know whatever the case might be in Starbucks in Kenya a cup of coffee tastes the same as it does in New York City because they have a system that they follow and so i think that when we look at franchises what we're really looking at is a business that has decided to run their business on a playbook of systems and i think that's a big difference you know you said at the uh, at the very beginning that you're kind of known as the systems guy but i want to say i think you're also the acronym guy because you have so many great acronyms and different ways of remembering things. And one of the ones that you spoke about an idea was FitBiz. So can you talk us through the FitBiz system that you've created? Yeah, I love acronyms. I think that they make great teaching maps. I love the one system, save yourself some stress, time, energy, and money. Super important. And my FitBiz acronym is actually how I break down the components of an operations manual. So I spell that F-I-T-B-I-Z, FitBiz. And the first one is figure out your organizational structure. That's the F, right? If everyone is accountable, then no one is accountable. So when we have, you know, a person that's either filling every role or two people filling multiple roles, it's time to figure out your organizational structure. So making one person accountable for each position is super important. Determining what those KPIs, those key performance indicators are, like a top five for each position, allows us to start to organize our company into getting people in the right seats, right? Get the right people in the right seats according to their strengths for the position, rather than letting it be oh, well, I thought that they were going to do it. And oh, no, I thought you were going to do it. And then there winds up being a lot of confusion. So that is the F. Uh, The next one, the I, is about investing in your talent. Once you start to realize the positions that you have, then you have to fill them. And investing in your talent starts early on just in the way that we 
interview, the way that we onboard, the way that we educate people as we bring them aboard, the way that we continue to educate them. I feel like there is a famous uh, little conversation that goes on between a CFO and a CEO. And the CFO is always concerned, of course, about the finances and the books. And so the CFO says, well, what if we invest in them and they leave? But a good leader says, well, what if we don't invest in them and they stay, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because we don't want these people like this. You know, we want to continually improve. We want a great company that's made up of great individuals. So the I in FitBiz is about investing in your talent and really having a solid plan to do that. The T that I talk about is tailoring your marketing. There are so many opportunities for marketing, and I think it's great that we're all getting in tune with social media, but there's actually at least 18 different forms of marketing that we should be thinking about. I like to follow a marketing wheel in our course. I also like to challenge people to identify who do you serve? Who are your three customer types? What are the words that you own? And really tailor your marketing message so that it's not about your company, but about them. So that's the fit. And then the biz, the B is boost your sales. If you cringe when somebody answers your phone, when you have a teammate answering the phone and you wonder, oh, what are they going to say? Are they going to make an appointment out of this phone call? Are they going to get the person to come in? It's an indication that you need to actually systemize your sales process. You need to give them a phone script. And then if you wonder what's going to happen when somebody walks through the door, then you need to systemize that as well. And that would be your sales tour. So boosting your sales comes with systemizing your sales processes. And then the next I is initiate operations. I know when we talk about systems that people are often, they're often feeling that it's going to be such a tedious, arduous process. How could I possibly have time to write things down? Or what would I write down? Is it a bunch of policies and procedures? And the answer is no, it's actually a lot simpler than that. There are people that you have working with you that, can, are, that are great at what they do and they can write down their processes. There are people such as if you are the main operator in your business, you are the most important system that you have. The problem is everybody's coming to you and you feel like a master juggler, like you're just spinning plates because you've never taken time to write down what it is that you do and teach it to other people. So when you initiate operations, you are taking the things that you do well and that other people do well and just putting it down into like a bullet pointed checklist. Even surgeons, in the book e by Michael Gerber, he talks about how surgeons use a checklist. And so if surgeons in surgery have a checklist, we should have a checklist for what we do. And then finally, the Z is zip up your financials. Dave Ramsey can be quoted to say, don't ask your money where it's gone, tell it where to go. And I think that's so important. Right? When we look at our financials at the end of the month, it really shouldn't be a big surprise. We shouldn't be like, oh, no, I spent that much on compensation or I spent that much on marketing or, you know, those things should actually just be confirmations. A P&L report is something that you should pretty much be able to expect 90% of it based on the fact that you've already set different budget numbers. And so in my course, FitBiz, we talk about how to set those numbers and what's appropriate for the different size companies that are out there. Travis, I want to look at two different uh, life stages of a fitness professional. One, uh, of a stage where they're just starting out in their business. They might have just bought their very first studio. And the second one, someone who's a bit more established and has been around for a while. If we take that first example, someone who is just starting out, maybe they're a PT that's opened up their first studio and they don't yet have specific ways that they may be on board or the way that they do their sales to or that type of thing, what would be those kind of initial critical systems that they should start writing down as they're, as they're developing and growing and, and implementing systems within their business? I think that it's very important. I know that we don't necessarily think of it as a system, but this is part of figuring out your organizational structure and ultimately your end goal. Uh, As Stephen Covey might say, starting with the end in mind. If you're just starting out, part of your systems is actually your vision, Mm -hmm. right? Because everything that you build in your company is going to be done according to the vision is how the world is going to be different because you are there. And once we know how you're going to make the world a different place, then we can start to systemize a business to support that. The mission is the how we're going to do it. So 
once we establish how we're going to do it, there are processes that underlie that. And I believe too that foundationally, they need to know their core values because every decision that's made about what systems will allow to be a part of our business is going to be based on those core values. Because often businesses that don't spend much time thinking about their core values regret it later on because they feel like they're starting to lose the heart of the business. So I think that that's very important for someone early on to say, what's our vision? What's our mission? What will be the core values that we'll hire by, that we'll make decisions by? I love that answer, Travis, because I feel as though that is also that point. Having your vision and your mission written down, even though, as you say, maybe we wouldn't traditionally call them systems, they become a... I don't know, they become a check for you as well later on, don't they? So once you have been in business for a little while and perhaps you're going through your operations manual or your playbook of systems, sometimes it's good to have those there as that point of reference to go back and check that everything that you're doing continuously points back to that original vision and and value. Yep. For example, even in how we structure our memberships, I know that there are some people out there that have really easy cancellation policies for their members. I'm in fact one of them. I, I like to I like to say that we have clients and not hostages, right? <laughs> often, often people sign up for memberships and they have to produce a death certificate or something in order to get another membership, <laughs> which is a really hard thing to produce, right? You know? It is. So, <laughs> Rather. If so, it's too late. Yeah. But the point is, you know, that is a core value decision. That that was a core value. So it's tough to write those policies, those procedures until you've already established those core values to say, you know, what is it that we're going to be about? Yeah, absolutely. And then let's just go to part B of of that question that I mentioned earlier. So if we now put ourselves in the shoes of a business owner that has been in business for a little while, maybe they've got one or multiple locations, and perhaps they have established a playbook of systems or their operations manual, how regularly should we go back and review those systems and just recheck that they're still relevant? How, how often should we review that? You know, I believe that an operations manual should have quarterly updates. We're always going to conferences and reading books and, and learning from our colleagues as to different systems that could improve our business. So when that happens, we want to have a sheet that's just running and we can say, okay, you know, here's something that we're going to add in and we'll do a quarterly update at a quarterly offsite meeting with our team. So that's very important. And another indicator that you need to go back and revisit your systems is that there's three components in every business, right? There's that sales and marketing on the front end that gets those customers in. There's the operations that retains those customers and provides that excellent customer service. And then on the back end, there's the finance and admin that makes sure that there's not money going out the back door faster than it's coming in the front door. So if you're having problems in any one of those areas, it's also an indicator to say, well, let's take a look at our systems. And if the system has been wrote, then it's probably the people are not applying the systems. And so we need to revisit and retrain people in those systems. Yeah, that's that's so important, Travis. And, you know, I bring that point up on purpose because I have this theory that quite often a operations manual becomes like a so many business plans and that is we spend all this time investing in creating a, an ops manual and uh, and producing it and then sometimes it can just sit in the drawer and not be looked at for 12 months. So, so the idea of actually putting in quarterly checks and as you say, keeping that little tally of things that you want to update and just cross-checking it against other areas, other departments of the business is absolutely pivotal and I want to um, take this opportunity to give everyone an action and that is to go now and have a look at your operations manual, double check when the last time was that you updated it, if you have one. And if you haven't already, then take Travis's advice and schedule in quarterly reviews uh, where you actually take the time to look at your ops manual and make any updates that are necessary. You know, I love what you're saying. And operations manual too often becomes a dusty book on the mm-hmm. shelf. And we don't want that. Uh, one thing that the Ritz Carlton does is they have a credo card, and that credo card is something that they carry with them every day. It reminds them of their steps of service, their service values, the things that they're supposed to do to really make the Ritz Carlton way of doing business live and breathe. 
And when I found that out, and I found that out through Todd Durkin, who visited the Rich Carlton and created his own credo card, I said, I'm going to create my own credo card. And so we created our own credo card, and it was based on things that were in our operations manual, parts of our extraordinary trainer checklist, parts of our core values, just the way that we wanted to treat our members. And every day, we send a text to all five locations, all the team members there, about just one little piece on that credo card. And that credo card, it just really helps us to make that operations manual live and breathe. So just another suggestion there for people so it doesn't become a dusty book. Wow, that is really cool. I'm gonna you can totally say no to this request. Do you would you consider sharing a photo of that with us? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. we would love yeah. that because because uh, I would love to pop that in the show notes because I know that I'm right now thinking, oh wow, I want to see what's on your credo card, and I'm personally going to take that idea and use it for the show, and uh, and I'm sure that a number of our listeners will be interested to check that out. So if you're willing and happy to share that with us, then I would just love to see a um, a pic of the Journey Fitness credo card. That's awesome. Love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> now we've already talked about a lot of different areas of business, a lot of different systems within businesses. Are there any other critical systems that you think we should keep in mind or be implementing into our business? Uh, you know, we talked about the new business owner and we talked mm-hmm. about the one that had been in business for a while. And I think that it's important for us to understand too, that management is a system, right? Having productive meetings, uh, having scorecards for each of your employees so that they know what's expected of them and how they can become responsible for the overall goals of the location. I think that that is very important as well. So another critical system is even the way that you host a meeting, you know, Patrick Lencioni, death by meeting, you know, making sure that you're systemizing those things so that you're not killing people, (laughs) killing your people with your meetings, right? It's just very important that we even systemize our management. Yeah, that's a that's a great one to keep in mind. So look, Travis, we've covered a huge amount of information already today. I would love you to leave us with our fit inspiration for today. And can you share with us what you feel are the most important three factors for systemizing a fitness business? Sure. Uh, the first most important factor is yourself. Because most often when we're talking to the different fit pros that are out there in the industry that are listening to this call, You got into this business because you were good at what you did. And so if that's you, or if you have somebody working for you that is just the face of your location and they're great at what they do, realize that what they do is a system. So it's not something that you can't train someone else to do. Sure, there will be different personalities, but it's just very important that we start writing it down, teaching it to other people. Otherwise, you have someone in high demand and you have someone who no one else can fill their shoes. So that is essentially your operations component, and I feel like that is our extraordinary trainer checklist. So three factors for systemizing your business. Number one, take a good look at who your best players are and what they do so well to systemize uh, and give a great customer service to your customers. And then uh, when it comes to other factors for systemizing your business, I would say, again, Take a look at the other forms of marketing that are out there because when we look at our sales and marketing component, I feel that everybody is learning about social media nowadays, but other people are forgetting about the grassroots, the grassroots of where we attend chamber events and get out there, the gift marketing, where uh, GIFT, again, an acronym. You said earlier that I was good with acronyms. (laughs) Here we go. Let's have some gift marketing where we get in front of them. Let's have some gift marketing where we have events, something to invite people to, right? So I think that that's a very important factor when systemizing your business, not to just get so hung up on social media that you actually disconnect from the other opportunities that are out there in the world when social media was meant to connect you more. And then finally, on the back end, the factors as you grow, I think that we need to scale. We need to scale our finances. So early on, it's very important to identify what you will allocate for compensation. Uh, I know in our coaching business, we shoot for 40%. Uh, We shoot for 5% of our budget to go towards marketing, and that's 5% of our revenue. So I think understanding your numbers early on would save you from a lot of headaches later on where you were wondering, well, I brought in all these customers, but now I still haven't made a profit. So it's very important to understand early on what your budget numbers will be. 
They are three fantastic takeaways. And, and Travis, I just feel like this has been such a valuable um, 30 minutes that we've spent together today. And I want to thank you so much for sharing your experience with all of us here today. And I think it's a great reminder that we should always be checking in with the systems within our business. We should always be reviewing them. Thank you for the amazing acronyms that you have shared with us along the way. And I have to point out, if anyone missed your pre-call quick five five last week, we did talk about the fact that you are an avid reader. And I think you probably dropped about five book titles in the, in the last 30 minutes. So I'm going to go back through and I'm going to get the links for each of those books. And we're going to include those links in today's show notes. So if you guys want to jump on and check out the books that Travis has mentioned today, then I strongly recommend that you just head over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and uh, and check out those books that he has been talking about. So Travis, as I said right at the very beginning, it was such an amazing opportunity and, and privilege to see you speak at IDEA and I'm very, very grateful for you taking the time to come on and join us here today on the show. Well, thank you for the honor of being on this amazing show. This has truly been a privilege and I will be sure to thank our listeners with that photo of the Credo card. So thank you all for listening as well. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Now, before I sign off today, I want to also let everyone know, because we didn't, we talked a little bit about your, your personal journey to getting to where you are today, but of course you have a book, which I read just recently. Um, do you want to just tell everyone briefly about the book? Because we'll also put a link to that in the show notes. Sure. It's Journey Fitness. And that is more so the story. If you are out there and you are a business owner that is struggling to achieve success, then this story is for you. I believe it will give hope to anybody that's struggling. So that is Journey Fitness, and it can be found on Amazon.com. And we also recently released a book called 52 Amazing Journeys. In fact, that was number one in five categories on Amazon.com. And it highlights the transformations and success of 52 of our members. It's pretty amazing how when you share your story, how many other people are become willing to share their story with you. And that's what happened with 52 Amazing Journeys. That is so cool, Travis. Well, thank you. We'll make sure that we pop the links in the show notes. And thank you once again for joining us today. Thank you. We'd like to thank our sponsor, OneFitStop, for their support. And we highly recommend all fitness professionals go to onefitstop.com to find out how their software will enable you to take control of day-to-day -day management in your fitness business. OneFitStop's scheduling, client management, programming, and payment collection tools will set your business up for success. Get ready for this week's bonus segment, your extra injection of information, education, and inspiration to strengthen your fitness business. Today, it's my absolute pleasure to be welcoming to the show, Will Ostrander, the Precore Product Manager. Will, welcome. Thank you so much for coming on today. Hi, Chantal. Thanks for having me. Now, you've got some exciting news to share with us about a, uh, a new product line that is launching. Tell us all about it. That's right. You're the first to hear. We're uh, launching our new 600 line commercial cardio product. Really, really excited about this product line. It's, it's bringing everything that we've done at our premium product down to a, uh, a price that's affordable for almost everyone. That sounds awesome. So tell us a little bit about the 600 line and who's it actually for? Yeah. So the 600 line is based off of our 800 and 700 lines. So our, our traditional, our premium and our budget price lines. So we're sharing common frames, we're sharing common plastics and motors and everything that makes the product good. And we're focusing our efforts to get the price down to a place where somebody that's in a, a small club or a personal training studio or physical therapy or something like that, small um, parks and rec, those kinds of environments where they want to bring a really premium experience, but they might not have the budget to do all those things. The 600 line is the perfect choice for them. Well, it sounds like you're speaking directly to the FPP family there, Will. It sounds amazing. So talk us through some of the key value propositions for the 600 line. Sure. So I mentioned a little bit about our, our platform approach. The customer that would be really excited about this product should know that, hey, we're basing it on the same frame. So all of our treadmills and all of our ellipticals are sharing common frames. They have common plastics. The 600 is just built a little differently. So we've strategically changed a few things to make it more cost-effective. The 600 line has access to all of our different consoles. So 
fully networked experience or simple LEDs, and it looks like it belongs in a club. So we're, we're taking away the old product that looked like it was 15 years old and we're replacing it with something that looks really amazing. So basically, if you are familiar with the pre-core products and if you're used to using them and love the, the experience and the feel, then the 600 line is going to feel really familiar and comfortable to you. Yep. It looks just like it would if it was a 700. In fact, it's hard to tell the, the products apart. That's sensational. Now, I believe you've got one other little piece of very exciting news to share with us. What's that, Will? I, I do. I'll share with you and, uh, and your listeners that we have a new warranty offering that we're rolling out with this product as well, across all of our products, in fact. But we're moving from a two years parts, one year labor to a three years parts, one year labor warranty. Specific with the 600 line, we're also adding a, an hour base. So if you wanted to put it into a higher use facility, you have an hours base component that protects the operator and pre-core a little bit. But in general, the total cost of ownership is a much more compelling discussion now where, that we're offering more coverage for our customers. Wow. I love that we have the exclusive on that piece of news, Will. Thank you so much. That's really exciting news. And uh, for anyone that is interested in learning more about the 600 line, or if they want to chat about any of the products in the pre-core range, what's the best way for them to get in contact? Yeah, of course. Precore.com, you can learn all about our products. Uh, the 600 line will be up and live in a couple weeks. We'll have lots of training materials if customers always have a, already have a relationship with us on our learning management system. On the website, we'll have sell sheets and info books. There's um, always reaching out to our local reps, calling us on the phone. We're always, we're always available to answer questions. Well, that is fantastic, Will. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And just a quick reminder to everyone that you can, of course, also jump over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com where you'll find the link in the show notes for Precore uh, as well. So, Will, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us an update and telling us all about the 600 line. You bet, Chantal. It was my pleasure. Precore Quick Fire 5. This week's pre-call Quick Five Five guest is the National Account Executive for Les Mills USA, Amy Boone Thompson. I want to say a very warm welcome to today's guest. Amy, welcome along to the show. Thank you. I am super excited to have you here today and we're going to kick things off with a pre-call Quick Five Five. So tell us, why do you do what you do? It's simple, to get more people moving. And what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? So I'm an avid networker and connector, and it has served me well in my career and also in helping foster the growth of others' careers. And what's an app or system that you use to stay in control of your workload? I use LinkedIn daily. I use it for a lot of different reasons, but it is my go-to for all things to organize myself. I love how you use LinkedIn. It's actually, I aspire to use LinkedIn, how you do. I think it's fantastic. And tell us what's one book, podcast, or blog that you would recommend and why? The First 90 Days by Michael Watkins. It's the only book I've read more than once. It fosters curiosity, humility, and also it reminds me to always be coachable. And tell everyone a little bit about the topic that we're going to be speaking about in your main interview next week. Yes, we are going to talk about leveraging your group fitness program to help improve retention. A topic that I know many of our listeners will be excited to hear about. So Amy, thank you so much for joining me today for the pre-call Quick Fire 5. Thanks. Before we finish off today, a reminder that all the resources, the links and a transcript for today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. Our most downloaded shows relate to lead generation. So Active Management have an awesome free checklist for improving what is possibly your most viewed page on your website. All you need to do is grab it at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. Thank you for joining me for another week of the show. I look forward to seeing you next week. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Music.